podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode and following on from the last one where we just touched on a few things. Um, this is The Therapy Show behind closed doors with Jackie Jones and Bob Cook and we're going to be talking about the rise of online therapy. Yes. And the thing. reason why I said it's touching on what we did last time we were talking about the length of your therapy career being 36 years plus and you must yeah. have seen some yeah. huge changes as far as technology and being online and things. Well of course I mean when I started training in 1984 you know, the internet age, computers, um, that type of technology wasn't with us. I mean, I think it was 1995, was it the first mobile phone? Um, the early computers were going to be in the 90s. Um, and, you know, so I, I always came around way before all that. And, you know, or, you know, I mean, we're in a completely different world now. Um, and out of the technology has come the accessibility for online therapy. Uh, and, you know, I th think there's good and bad about that. I think there's disadvantages and positivity. And um, I'll, ho I I I'll hold my hand up and say, you know, I was trained very much in relational psychotherapy. So I've always prefer talking to somebody in real time, yeah, rather than on on uh, you know over what whatever platform people use now, like um, Microsoft Teams or Zoom is the most popular, I think. Yeah, um, and you have telephone to telephone counselling and text counselling. So the the technology there is there. So I. I prefer relational work. I was trained in that. And I come from a generation where online therapy wasn't around, of course. So I was trained in that. Uh, I wasn't trained in uh, online therapy. Um, it's interesting, you know, if I'd come along and, and later on 2010 or something and training, training now, for example, where we have modules on online therapy, um, I'd have been... A, <sighs> It would be very different, I think. Yeah. But I, I come from a completely different era. And um, yeah, so but I do see great advantages. And I, I don't think I don't think um, well, a better way to look at this is I, I think modern psychotherapy has been changed dramatically by this technology. And um, I have done before the pandemic, for example. I was thinking back 2015 when one of my clients moved, or maybe before that, 2014, moved up to Scotland. And in terms of the duty of care, for example, and things like that, uh, it would have been to pass on to another therapist. But in the transitional time, I talked online with her. Um, and it was a completely different experience for me. And I think if the, the function of accessibility is a really big plus for online, yeah. online protection and to helping people, you know, um, move to another therapist. I can think of many, many reasons why online therapy is a really big plus. I haven't really done that much of it because it's not a form of or mode I particularly like. Um, I have done some, I've done some, um, were some groups because with the pandemic everything moved online and therefore yeah. even though I stopped working clinically and one-to-one -one, I did do some I was still doing some therapy intensive for the trainees and if and in fact with the latest COVID changes my next little group might also go back to on Zoom and I work quite well I've got I work quite well on them but you know I found myself working much more cognitively um, because of the lack of a, a three-dimensional, you know, lack of being there in person. 
and um so there's pluses and negatives yeah i i work in purely online and have done since the beginning of the pandemic for lots of reasons um self-isolated because i had a teenager that was in school and potentially catching it and passing it on to clients and all those sorts of things more recently i'm having some work done on the house and i just haven't got a space to do the therapy so there's there's lots of different reasons around it so i work via zoom but i can't get my head around telephone therapy and therapy via text those are the one for me it's bad enough seeing somebody on a screen, but at least I can attempt to read changes in body language or any anything that I'm seeing as well as hearing. Whereas if it's via text or if it's a telephone conversation, I think there's a lot of information that I'm not picking up as a therapist. I don't feel I would be doing my job properly. So on Zoom, then that's the technology, yeah. Okay. You, what you're saying is um, what's positive is as well is you can read people's body languages. Um, you have a, a you can see them visually. Yeah. So you have a different sense. However, without that sense there, like on the telephone or texting, then it would be a different type of therapeutic exchange. For me, it's just taking another level off everything the more you go down. In a room with somebody, I think I'm quite perceptive of the general feeling that's going on in the room as well as what I can see and hear and everything. So that's kind of like all my senses are getting a connection. Yeah, yeah I understand that. I mean, Zoom I is like, visual as well as hearing. Yeah. And then a telephone conversation is just hearing it. It's just taking away that contact at each level for me. Yeah, I know that's completely, I mean, I, I said right at the beginning, I'm very much a relational therapist and uh, I, I, I really, in an ideal world, would only work with face to face, if you want to put that language. Um, now, Zoom is, I think, better than texts and better than telephone counselling, but I was thinking while you were talking that from the therapist's point of view, I'm hearing it from your point of view, and then I'm saying it from my point of view. It's an interesting, isn't it? Because another another sort of query popped into my head, and that is, what is therapeutic? See, when we talk, if we go back way before the birth of psychotherapy with Freud, uh, you know, I would say that the major form of therapy was religious healing. Mm -hmm. And we could go back to we could go right the way back to Socrates, uh, the philosophical Greeks, and we could go all the way back. To, we could we could have a wonderful podcast about what is therapy, you know, in inverted commas, and what is in therapeutic in inverted commas. So I'm talking about face to face because I was trained that way. I think most more effective therapy happens that way because you've got more access to the different senses, uh, uh, tactileness, and what happens in the body and various other things. So that's would be my ideal. But it doesn't mean, I don't think, that text counselling, telephone counselling, Zooms, my, all these different things doesn't, doesn't, have, doesn't necessarily not have a therapeutic aspect to it. No. Even though it might be limited. Yes. And as, as I know, for me, I'm a stickler for confidentiality and ethics and all those sort of things. And the further down the ladder you go, taking away that contact to me is more open to things going wrong. Oh, absolutely. Of course. I completely agree with you. Um, on a text message, I, I I don't know who it is that's on the end of the phone texting. I could be texting yeah. Yeah. the no, partner you're... of somebody who's abusing somebody or what. I don't know. <laughs> no, you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. And, you know, if we're on the, that sort of conversational area, then if we talk about protection, if I do work therapeutic online, which is 
again, I'm going to say you don't do much of it, but if I did, one of the things I would really think about is protection. Yeah. Because here's a really good one because I'm probably going to do some training on um, for the some of my students at the Manchester Institute, uh, which will be or could be live demonstrations. Now, if it goes on to Zoom, which I'm at the moment it isn't, but it could easily do. Um, I'd have to think again a little bit because I have to be aware that when you're talking to somebody on the other end of a Zoom, they may be by themselves in their top, in their attic, on the top of their room, and there's not the same sort of support mm -hmm. that there might be if you actually see them face to face because yeah. you can check up on things and yeah. make sure they don't rush out into the cold weather, they can have a cup of coffee, they can go to costas across the road, they can, all well, many other things yeah. where, where you can check things out. But if you're doing a demonstration or even if you're doing live therapy with somebody on Zoom, you don't really know what support and protection they've got. Yeah, yeah. Or have access to. And those are the things for me that, that I have a cut off point. If it's not face to face as in live, so, you know, Zoom is is as far down the road as I'm prepared to go yeah. with yeah. therapy. Yeah, and that that's just personal. I don't have anything against anybody else that does it. And I kind of agree with what you touched on earlier on, that who says what is therapeutic? Yeah, and again, you see, if you're, if you're, if you're trained in the United Kingdom uh, to be a, a, a psychotherapist, uh, accredited by a regulating body, then they demand certain things of you. And in the training, and that I, I now always provide some online psychotherapy training and protection is thought of and all those sorts of things. Um, I've traveled a lot, by the way, and I do, before the pandemic, I used to teach people to be therapists in Slovenia and Australia. Now in Slovenia, where there's not so much geographical geographical accessibility, then I think one of the real pluses of online therapies uh, provided an accessibility that, for therapy, uh, which might have not been there before. Yeah, 100%, yeah. That, that is a really, really, really big plus, in my opinion. Yeah. People, you're opening up the accessibility of healing and therapy to many, 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 many people who never had that accessibility. Yeah. And that is pretty wondrous, isn't it? It is, it is. But again, I don't know whether it's my mother coming out to me, <laughs> but it's like, there's, there's always a negative to it. And that, you know, it, it can be open to being abused you know if we're looking at we're, we're looking at the rising online therapy but that encompasses an awful lot of of different things you know that somebody can go on a weekend training course and offer online yeah. unregulated therapy. therapy to people online you know it, it's it's an open forum when we're looking at online self-help oh. courses where people buy a course and do it online you know that for some can be classed as therapy you are right i don't think the internet can be regulated so uh, easily if you like uh, or in the same way as face-to-face uh, -face training so for example where where i work at and the institute which i founded is the training an accrediting organization of the UKCP, which is the major regulating body in the United Kingdom. And they've recently done an audit uh, of our training and, um, you know, really went through our thoroughly through our different practices and all of the things you're just talking about. And um, that happens every five years, a bit like an Ofsted yeah. educationally. Now, you know, um, in the online therapy world, there's perhaps that's there's not that sort of you know like um, accountability of a lot of these courses or there's not a there's the regular there's not that same regulating function 
by a lot of these uh, bodies because it's such a new phenomena. Yeah. So you, you are right. You're talking about the unregulated process of a lot of the internet courses and a lot of the um, rise of online therapists who perhaps aren't um, regulated or accounted for as a lot of the conventional therapies. And it's a shame because, you know, I totally agree with what you were saying about people in Slovenia. It, it is a wonderful thing, you know, and it makes it accessible to yeah, much more people yeah. who yeah. otherwise wouldn't have it. So yeah. th it's like a, a fine, you know, it's, it's on a knife edge. It is. And, um, you know, it's like all these things on the internet, especially what we're talking about here, there needs to be, I believe, a move to some regulation. Yeah. Don't know how that would happen particularly, but I think that we are going to go backwards. I think online therapy is only going to go bigger. And therefore, uh, and again, it's pluses and minuses about that. Um, but I think that needs to be a move to regulation, just like I think there needs to be a move to governmental relation, governmental regulation of psychotherapy and counseling per se in the United Kingdom, which there isn't at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's only internally regulated. Now, with, you are absolutely thousand pound, you know, totally correct with all these courses on the internet and everything else. You know, a lot of them are, well, the majority of them are not regulated or accounted for in any way, for form or shape. Mm. Well, yeah, I, there was one that popped up on mine. I think it was seven pounds for, you know, to, to become a hypnotherapist or something oh, random God. like that. And it was yeah. like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, though, isn't it? That is the problem with the honor. That is a really problem area. And what we're talking about here, yeah, the internet and online courses, there is no regulation. Yeah. Or if there is, I don't know any. Well, I think that's one of the things, you know, for anybody that's listening or whatever, what, what would be your recommendations for accessing online therapy? Going through, well, you know, the counselling yeah. directory, going through word of mouth recommendations, Oh, is not answering an advert on Tinternet. Oh, so is the question, what's my recommendation for people go to online therapy? Okay, yes. I would, you know, it's a bit similar and different, if you like, to what I would say in face-to-face -face therapy. I think it's really, really important for the customer or the client, if you want, check out mm. the credentials, the qualifications, the person they're going to sign up with yeah how do they check that out? they say to them okay do you belong to a regulated body if so which one do you do now you know in this country that the ukcp is a major regulated body for psychotherapy and in counseling bacp so that's two major regulated bodies so if they say yes uh, we've done uh, we are members of one of those bodies and you know, I spent four years trained to be a counsellor or I spent five years trained to be a transactional analyst and here's my website and go and look at it and look at the content and if you want, this is my supervisor's name or whatever, you know. It, yeah. I think there needs to be, and I think it's the same for face-to-face. -face. There needs to be some responsibility for the person who's actually going to use the services that they check out the people that they're working with. Mm. I mean, it's, you know... Would I go and buy a thirty thousand pound car from a, you know, a, 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 a second hand dealer down the road, or would I go to the proper Toyota garage? I know where I would go to, yeah. say, but I do know what I do first. It's check it all out, yeah. because the person down the road who's doing the second hand dealing might be a Toyota, you know, expert or whatever it is. But I check it all out, and I think it's a response. There has to be some responsibility. For the customer to check these things out and if they don't check them out then they are open to goodness knows what and it's the same in the real world you check these things out now the other thing recommendation is one of the best best avenues that people have had used the services of x they go on their website i was thinking you could go on my website bobcook.org and you can read all about me and all these things 
and you can check all these things out and then you could even phone the ukcp or the bc you know whoever you wanted up you can do all that lot and recommendation is also really really important i think yeah so if you haven't got recommendation check out with the person where they were trained what their qualifications are and all those things yeah don't just say oh you work with anger do you oh let's go ahead you know it's like <laughs> unfortunately that happens but it's not yeah. a good thing but, but you know as, as the client you are handing over yourself to this other person yeah vulnerabilities trauma everything so it's really important that you invest some time and effort into researching and find a therapist that is going to meet your needs oh, absolutely and as i say i do all the assessments of the institute face to face people you know lots of recommendations because we've been around a long time uh xxx and there's some people still who go on the website and check us out and come through google or whatever it is in the internet you need to check people out even more extensively i believe yeah really. yeah because there's fake things up there bob it's not all real <laughs> So it's a bit yeah. like the wild west because it's so unregulated but i do believe it, the person who's using the services needs to ask those questions yeah now you are quite right do you then believe them well i don't know you can go to the website and check that out you can you can at least do your part in that extensive research and i think if you're going to do therapy or counseling online you really do need to do that yeah my daughter 23 so she's brought up in social media she said to me dad i'm gonna uh well what you're talking about here and i pointed to a website that i knew would uh which is highly recommended and i said go and look at all those you know those uh uh references come back to me and i can you know say a little bit about it but she did her homework on who they are what the references were, what the qualifications were, what they meant. So she had the right questions to ask these people to begin with. Yeah. Now, if you don't do all that lot, you are, I think, opening yourself up to problems or could be. And I think, you know, even when you were talking, then I was thinking, you know, the unfortunate thing about this and, you know, the, the, the potential dangers is that we're talking about some potentially really vulnerable people that oh. might not be in the right frame, you know, frame of mind or state of mind yeah. Yeah. to take up that work and research to find it out. They might just. Yeah. And that's the same in the real world, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Yeah yeah i think the biggest plus i'm going to say again for online therapy with all the guidelines and things we could put in place and everything else is it brings to the masses you know um the accessibility for counseling and therapy and that's a fantastic plus i completely agree with you about lack of regulation accountability and all those sorts of things we've just been talking about them um, but I don't think, I think we're only going to go forward now in terms of online therapy and counselling online. And I think, I, I think I'm just repeating myself, but I think the need for regulation uh, has to come on the internet as well as in face to face in the real world. Yeah. And I, I don't want to come across as a negative Nelly. I completely agree. You know, it does open up therapy to the masses and it's made the world a very accessible place for people like you said earlier on about a client that moved you know i've had similar that clients have, have moved abroad and wanted to maintain that relationship and you know that was one of the first times that i did a zoom before the pandemic it didn't it didn't sit comfortably with me at all at the beginning and that was my step into it if that made sense yeah. Also, I'm an expert in certain areas. So I'm an expert in multiple personality disorder. I'm an expert in dissociative identity disorder. I'm an expert in certain areas. So that means, though I don't, I don't work clinically anymore, but if I did, um, people phone me up from all around, 
uh, all over the country and all over the world. Yeah. And they have access to me in a way they would never have in 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 face to face because they can't travel from France, Spain, Australia, or wherever it is, and come and see me. And they, but but if I was working more clinically, they could do. Yeah, yeah. And I th I think you know, like you say, I think it's only going to increase over time. I don't think oh. we're going to go backwards. We're just going to go forwards. Yeah. I think regular. I think the big point is regulation. As it is, I believe, in the real world. Yes. Yeah. It parallels a bit. And the other thing, which I which hasn't been mentioned, but I really like to mention it, is there needs to be regulated, accounted, effective training. Yes. So people are going to become online therapists, they need to have, I believe, competent, effective, good training just as in the real world well face-to-face -face world yeah see I've done both both I you know I trained at the institute for four years and yeah. loved it would not change any of it I've also done a hypnotherapy course I've done an LLP yeah. course I've done a coaching course I've done lots of other courses since then fantastic Jeff. purely for my own interest good you know, TA will always be my foundation. That's what I always fall back on. But I can honestly, hand on heart, say I, I've never got anywhere near as much as what I did from the Institute. And I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you, but the, the, the way it was set up, the, you know, the two years of, of training to get the competencies to still be training while practicing and having that hand holding safety bit you know the yeah well, it, well it, you know it's, if you think of attachment theory and you think of experiential work and you think of um you know that face-to-face -face experience that's very hard to replicate online yeah it's impossible well it's impossible yeah so so basically correct you have a different type of training online yeah and i believe i believe like i said right at the beginnings of this uh, podcast i believe that it's it, it, the best way to put it, it would be it, online therapy training would be a different or is a completely different type of training to face to face because yeah. they can't be replicated face to face no. because you're missing the attachment you're missing the bonding you're missing the experiential work, all that stuff you have a different type of training online yeah I think that what you were saying then that you know the experiential I think that's that's the bit that you you can't replicate you, no, you you know, can't. You can, well, all you can do is send people to therapy so it's a completely different type of training and in fact you know but having said all that what I'm just going to say now this will just sum it up for you I've had a huge call for months for me to do a uh, methods and theories of transaction analysis online, five day course, five day certificate. And you know where the people are going to come from. They're going to come from different parts of the world. They're going to come from different parts of the United Kingdom. And they can get access to, access to me in a way they could never get. And at the same time, there will be things missing. Yeah. Because we can't meet, we can't do experiential work, we can't. So. For me, I think. Like I said, my, my TA training at the Institute was my grounding. Yes, good way to look at it. I, I, I'm okay doing extra online stuff because I've got that there. To I just agree. do a four-year degree level TA online, I know I wouldn't have come out. Oh, you, no, you'd be a very different, yeah. very different animal. Yeah. And that... Yeah. that that in a way replicates what we're talking about for customers or clients in the therapeutic world. And I know I'm biased and I don't, I, at least I owe my stance right at the beginning, but I think a relational face-to-face -face encounter is a completely different animal to a face-to-face -face Zoom encounter. Yeah. That doesn't mean there's not usefulness. Uh, 100%, yeah. It's different. Yeah. And I've said what I'm biased on, but I do think the real plus side is accessibility yeah and for something i would call educative therapy yes yeah which is more cognitive therapy 
yeah. if you want to put it that way. Um, but for the real emotional, relational work, very difficult to do online. It's different altogether. Completely. It's a different beast. I completely agree. But there is a use for it. There is, there is a, a need and there is a place for it. I do think protection is a really big thing. I hope we've highlighted enough on this podcast because I, I, I do worry, worry or get concerns about therapists who don't think enough about the support, isolation or where the client is when they go to these types of areas. Yeah. Of trauma, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why when I first started doing it, I would only do it with clients that I had seen face to face, like the one that then moved away because we'd already got the relationship. I kind of knew her, I knew her background. So I, I as a therapist, felt safer. Oh, yes. Than just somebody phoning me up that I've never met before or anything yeah another area I know we have to I could talk for many many moons on this subject but another area of course is motivation yeah so so for example you know for somebody come to Chilton say 10 miles away whatever it is and they come five o'clock they have to go out of bed they have to go through the wind or, or, or where the wind is or whether it's wet or whether I've it's done dark. that many a time to the institute Bob yeah. <laughs> takes quite a lot of motivation yeah to get out of bed or to just go to the computer uh, doesn't take that much motivation no now i believe for people uh, you know i believe motivation is a really big big factor uh in cure actually yeah something needs to be really yeah. motivated so there is a lot in this. I think I haven't done the research, but I, I guess people probably, if they were on online therapy, would be shorter. Probably, it would be actually much more cognitive. Yeah. Um, it would be a very different animal. It probably is a for a different animal. Yeah. But I don't think I don't think it's going to go away. I think this is. I Not think really this really world's just going to increase more. Yeah. And well done you for doing a five day training course with some people as well. It's yeah, yeah. I, I you know, like I, you say, you, you you're reaching people that would potentially not been able to have access to it. Interesting subject, Jackie. Yes, thank you so much. So um, What's our next one? I can't remember what we said we were doing next time. Okay, so I look forward to the anticipation of They that. were really interesting, whatever they were, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I thought these two were very interesting. I thought this subject's a really interesting one. And um, because I know that online therapy, online counselling, it's not going to go away, it's going to go bigger. And I've always been moved by the idea of accessibility to therapy and counselling as a real plus for online therapy. So it's good to have the chance to talk about it. Yeah, I always like the opportunity of talking to you about anything, Bob. Oh, that's very nice of you. Right, so okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll, see, <laughs> I'll see you on the next episode. You will see me online on the next exercise. Very true. Speak soon. <laughs> yeah, take care. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show. Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.